Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely Christmas card. So this is my first Christmas related project. It's much earlier than I've done before, but then I wasn't on the Trimcraft design team last year. So this is using Trimcraft product and I just thought I wanted to start off with something that was pretty out there, pretty spectacular. So this is actually a requested card by Vanessa. She requested me to make this card from Mixed Up Crafters group and it was from a Craftsy print picture that she sent me. This is very bulky so it will fit perfectly in my 5x7 envelope boxes and I will link those up here so you can just go to that but also you can make this any size you want so this is working on a 5x7 card but it's very easy to adapt so let's get into it this is how it looks I've used these lovely toppers got a nice gold ribbon there and then I've done the herringbone technique on the back here is where you will write your message so I've done a little bit of gold heat embossing I've used one of my crafters companion stamps and everything I've used today will be linked below. Then when you open up the bow, this all kind of sprays out and it is the five star fold card. Okay, so basically it's five cards. So this is one card here and it's that style. Now, I'm still gonna decorate this further, but I will add pictures in my blog because like I said, it's early on. I may want to personalize this. So I don't want to, you know, do too much with it now, but the basics the bases are here and then you can go and do what you want with it. But that hangs within this section here. So you have all this room either side, but these cards have been done. These are the center pop out cards. So it's just that, but you do it five more times and you stick them all together. So there's this side here, which matches these stars. These stars are the one and a half inch stars that I just cut from my Cricut machine. They're the default stars that they have on the file there. So I just cut those. And doubled them up but any dies that you have you can obviously use for this you might want to have one piece hanging down and then here you've got that one there these papers are gorgeous and then this one here and then that one there and then this end here you then tie off to keep it together so it kind of becomes a little bit almost like a I guess like an ornament you know so but they don't have to keep it like this if they want to close it down they can or just you know put it back in the box so you'd have that bit maybe facing at the back so you may want this one here to be your main one with your maybe Merry Christmas or whatever sentiment you're going to put on it but also you can use this for any occasion it doesn't have to be for Christmas this would make an amazing birthday card you know or a really grand wedding card so don't feel because I'm bringing it out as a Christmas card now that that's what it needs to be because you no, know, just change your papers and it's easily adapted and then again this and then you just undo it and then bring it back round. These will all fall in. If they catch, just push some in like that and then just tie it back off again. Okay, so let me show you how to make this pretty easy card. Okay, so this is the paper pad I've used. It's the Twilight Wishes. It's the Dovecraft Premium Collection. Really, really lovely palette of colours, That those real rich colours with that gold. I just think it's really, really lovely. So that's the one I've used there. Then I have used... For my ovals that I'm cutting out inside each one, it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh large, or well, depending how you look at it, I'm going to say it's the seventh smallest oval from the Card Making Magic A5 oval dies. Again, they will be linked below. I'll give you the exact measurement of that one in a moment. So I've already gone ahead and done a huge chunk of the card because it is... Like I said, it's five cards in one. So once you've done one card, then you just stick them all together. So the topper here, so I've done my front cover, but I've done this really nice, the herringbone technique. And I'll link that tutorial up here because that's separate. And I want to keep this video, most of my videos, as short as I can. So if I just link you to other videos, it's easier that way. So click on that one if you want to be able to see how i done this background. Loads of you do enjoy this. It's a really nice one for using up your scraps. So I had a lot of leftover pieces when i done this bigger card. So I thought, well, you know, I'll just do this. So it's really easy. Then I've got a couple of circles there. I've already put this ribbon in. I'm going to talk you through all that when we get to it. And then I've used one of those lovely sentiment toppers. Although the wow factor is in the card when we open it up I did want there to still be you know quite a nice front cover and I think this is a great way to show off the papers I've also pulled out the twilight wishes the little wooden shapes these are the baubles and the bows there I may well use those I'm not entirely sure yet for every card because you're going to have five cards all together for every card you also want two pieces of 10 by 7 
I'm using paper, that paper pack is paper and I would advise you to have a decorative paper rather than a card because there are so many parts of this once it all comes together. You want it to not be too bulky, I mean there is a bulk but you don't want it to be too much and I find the paper works so much better. So two pieces for each card and this is my 5x7 pre-made card base. So just ignore that I have already done the front cover on this one. Yours will be plain. Just keep them plain for the minute and once I put them all together and show you then you'll know which one to be your front cover because one of them you will need to add this onto it as well as what I'm going to show you in the middle. So you don't actually need the scoreboard for this so I'm going to get rid of that. And what I found easiest to create all those centre pieces is to just fold it by hand. It was much, much easier. So you want to decide what ones you want to have as your outer decorative paper and your inner decorative paper. So for this one, I'm going to have this one as my outer. So what you want to do is fold it in half with the pattern on the outside. I think I've cut mine slightly crooked there, but it's fine. Okay. So with the pattern on the outside, fold it in half then fold it back on itself. So you're folding this outer edge to this edge here, right up to the score line where you just folded it, okay? Flip it over and do the same with that one. So now you should have this W, okay? And that means you've got even panels. Then with this one, which is gonna be my inner piece, I'm just gonna fold this in half. Now mine are going to cover your, the whole of your card. I'm not going to have any mats and layers, I'm not going to have any borders, anything like that. So this piece here is going to go and cover the whole inside of this card, like so. This piece, once we cut that middle oval out, is going to be then stu stuck on the sides here, okay? And it's going to have that oval cut out and that's where we're going to have the dangle. So, okay, so I'm going to use my Kalau glue. You don't have to use this one. I do recommend it for this project because you're sticking so much together. This not only makes it very, very strong because this is paper, and this is a quite a flimsy card base, actually. This, these ones here, they were quite cheap. I think I actually picked them up from the pound shop. But um, once I add this, obviously it makes it very strong, but it also, there's no warping whatsoever because there's no water in this. It's not a water-based, it's a solvent-based. So that's my recommendation. I do have my Dawn Bibby, my Precision glues and stuff, but I actually just for giving it if anything that just that stiffness is it's just brilliant it really does make the card feel very professional and like a shop brought kind of card so I'm going to cover one side first because there is I guess a little kind of a, a a way to stick this down because what you don't want is there to be any buckling on the inside so if you do one at a time and when you stick this down keep this on a right angle because you are never going to open the card up like this. And if you stick it flat and then bring it up, all this is going to buckle. So if you stick it and keep it at a right angle, so I've got that right up into that corner. I'm then going to add some more glue onto the front of this one. And then rather than fold that down flat, I'm going to bring it up and again keep it on that right angle. And just then spread that one out. Again, ignore that I've got that ribbon there. You can go right in there and get a really nice corner because all that's going to happen now is it's going to close and it's going to open no more than that. It's probably going to only actually be there. But like I said, if you were to stick it all down when it's flat and then bring it up, you're not going to have this all nice like this. It's going to be, you might even have a gap. But if you see there, I haven't got any gap at all because I've stuck it and been able to, you know, push it right into that corner. And again, you just get a really nice finish with your card. Okay, so you want to do that and all those these two pieces here because this is for each card remember so you need to double it so you've got enough for five I'll give the full quantities in my blog but everything I do here you need to make obviously four more because that's how many cards we need five in total so yeah so stick that down on all the other four cards that you have then with this piece here I'm going to grab my oval now I have already folded it we are now going to flatten it again but because it's a paper, it won't crack. So this oval, make sure, yeah, they are up the right way. This oval is gonna sit, so you've got an equal amount over this center score line here. So there's my fold, and this is gonna go over there. So I wanna make sure I've got the same amount. It's about three quarters of an inch with this one here. Again, I'll give you the measurements in a second. Let's just get this in place. So I'll put one there. 
Okay, so this one's five and seven eighths long, and then the width of this oval is about three and a half inches. So something around that size will um, will be good. So now I'm going to run that through my die machine. I do need to use my bigger one because this is seven inches. But as I did say at the very beginning, you can make this any size card that you want. Once you see how the process is done, it's very easy to you know adapt it for yourself for your card sizes that you like to do. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so that's cut nicely, and now fold it up like so, just kind of reinforce those folds again. Now if you want to, because I was thinking about doing it, but then I thought I don't want white, there's, you know, there's no white on my card. This is now going to go like that, oh, they're upside down, let's do it the right way up, like that. Okay, so you get to appreciate this lovely pattern paper on the outside and then that on the inside. However, you can also fold these inwards, okay, and you could stick it like that, making sure you butt them right up in that corner so you don't see any of that. So you would have white. So if you've got something that you really want to pop on the front, then you can do that. But I don't know, there's no white in this collection and I just thought it looked a bit too sharp. It just looked too bright against it. But can you see how that will look against it? But I prefer, for me, for this card that I'm doing, I'm gonna have it with them that way. I just need to fold them again, but see what I mean, this doesn't crack, it's, you know, paper's a lot more softer, so it's a bit more forgiving when you kind of want to fold in all directions, but um, yeah, I'm going to keep mine like that, but you can do it the other way. Now, before I stick that down, you want to pop your dangle piece in. Now, now, I'm having this hanging freely, but you can join it right up, but the reason I'm not doing that is because if you have that completely joined, when your card closes, whatever you've got here, so if you imagine, because this will be the outside of your card, if that's nice and straight, these, these bits are going to stick out. They're going to be sticking out like that. And these are only small, so if you've got something bigger, it could stick right out and then it's not going to fit in your, you know, your box envelope. So I'm just having them dangling freely. So on the back, make sure again my cardstock is the right way up, I'm going to put a very small bead of hot glue just there. And then I'm just going to sit that over the top and just push that down. Okay, so now I have that dangling nicely in the centre. All right, so whatever you want. But again, you're going to need now to do that on all the others. And then that is now going to stick so it's like that. So I'm going to pop my glue on one side first and do it all step, you know, one at a time because um, yeah, it's just easier that way. Okay, so I'm going to just lay that down, slide it right up to the edge because again, I'm not using, I'm not having any mats and layers. Everything that I'm doing on this one is flush with the card, so bring that right up there. And then on this side, again, just going to pop my glue. Okay, so you will now have five that look like this. Now I will be decorating further, but I'm not going to do that yet. It's still too early and I may want to personalise this a little bit more. So at the minute, they're just going to be staying like this. So ignore this, okay? Ignore that I've put that on. Just imagine that you've just got five like this right now. So I'm going to bring this in because this is what I've already gone ahead and done. So now here are my four other cards. So I have one here, two, three and four. And all you're going to do is stick each side. So this is one card here, and you're just going to stick the right-hand side of that card to the left-hand side of the next card. So oh, there's that one there. And this is turned into chipboard. This is so strong because I've used the Kalau glue. And you're just sticking each side together. So now I've got these two open sides here ready for this to go in. Okay. Now, because this is the last one, so you'll do your four like this. Your last one, you're just going to stick the right-hand side, just this side, to this one here. Because that is then going to become the front of this card when we have it closed and we present it. They will then open it up, and then what will happen is we're going to join those two together with the ribbon. So this is going to be where I'm going to write my sentiment, and I've got a piece there which I'll talk you through in a moment. So what I'm going to do now is stick this one onto here, and it will complete the five-star card. 
and then I'm going to stick this bit on with the ribbon and then that will close like that and you can see this is a wow card, this is brilliant but it also then nicely closes and you will imagine these will all fold in, don't worry it does that's because they're all hanging freely, they all fold in and go nice and flat but that will be the front this is going to have a big bow here and then you've got this spine where they're stuck together so let's get this one stuck down, so I'm going to cover this So just spend some time making sure you get it all lined up, okay? Okay, so that is now all stuck. Then what I've got, so this piece here is five by seven, and then this piece here is four and three quarters by six and three quarters, and that's gonna cover that back one there completely, okay? So before I stick that down, I want to add some ribbon. I wanna sandwich a piece of ribbon in between this one here. So I've already gone and stuck this one under here. So do the whatever detail you're doing on the front cover. And then this is stuck on some foam adhesive, this disc with this sandwiched in between, okay? So all I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna use some of this glue, which I cannot see, there it is, it is on there. And I'm gonna keep this attached, because I'm just gonna cut it down the middle, but I'm just gonna stick that in the center like so. So I'm just gonna let that dry a minute. Now when I stick this over the top, it's going to stick right over where I've marked, where I've stamped that sentiment, so it shouldn't interfere when someone goes to write on it. This one here which was stamped using the, this is one of those Crafters Companion Christmas ones that I brought. This is the Winter Wishes and it's lovely. You get so many big um, sentiments. Well, they've done a whole collection. I got all five of them. This is the Winter Wishes one and it's this one here. I hope your Christmas is filled with love and laughter. But you've got lovely big sentiments and as I said when I got these, these are the ones you're going to see me use in pretty much all my Christmas cards this year and probably next as well because um, they're just timeless. So this one is hoping your Christmas year is filled with love and laughter. So I just used my gold embossing powder and just the same papers from throughout from that collection. So I'm just going to again stick this down with my Kalau. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut that there and tie this off and just check it all works. And there you have it. it. Seals up nicely. On the back is obviously going to be where you'd write your message because once, even if they don't see that, when they open it up, it's going to naturally all fall out like this and then come around. And once they do this, they're going to see the back and see your message. But then what you do is you tie it off this end Mine's still drying a little bit there, so I'll just do it loosely, like so. And then they have this lovely decorative piece. I am gonna decorate further, like I said, I'll probably do things on these panels. Um, I might have a nice Merry Christmas. I've got those bright rosa ones, which I'll probably have hanging down. You'll either see that in the pictures when this goes up, or I'll update you on Facebook, you know, when I get, get around to actually sending this one out. But it's a real solid piece. And it is lovely. It's a shame every time I bring it up though, you don't really <laughs> appreciate it. But once I've got more decoration on this, I just wanted to show you the basics because everybody's going to have their own thing to decorate. So you don't need to watch me do all that, but you will see it in the photos. And then here is my box envelope for the five by seven and it fits in there perfectly. Okay, and then I can decorate that further as and when, but I'll keep that in there now to protect it. So yeah, so there you have it guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you to start making Christmas cards. I can't believe this is my first one now done. So thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.